Welcome to Had a Magical Day, the podcast about Disney parks that's like taking a vacation in the middle of your day. Hello and welcome to another episode of Had a Magical Day. I am your host, Scott, along with my co-host, Andrea. Hello. Hello. And we have a special guest today. It's Ken Reed. Welcome, Ken. Pardon my dog's barking. They've been quiet till you said my name and then they yelled. Oh, that's okay. Uh, that happens with my dog all the time, too. When you say my name, your dog yells. No. <laughs> <laughs> I find a lot of people tell me that happens. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, but to answer your question, I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for being on the show. You're welcome. Um, for, for people who don't know, Ken hosts a very popular podcast of his own called TV Guidance Counselor. It has been on for quite a while. Uh, it's been, uh, what did you say, eight years, Ken? And like yeah, almost 500 we're on, year, episodes. we're on year eight. Yep, we're approaching, barreling towards episode 500. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun show. If you haven't listened to it, go check it out. It's on iTunes and everywhere else, pretty much. And each episode, he and a guest take a uh, an episode of TV Guide. Ken has an extensive collection of TV Guides. And so the guest picks out a particular ep- uh, issue of TV Guide, and they go through and talk about what the person would have been watching at that period in time. So it's it's a lot of fun to check that out. But today, Ken is here to tell us. Andrea, what's Ken going to tell us about? Ken is going to talk to us about something that I don't know a whole lot about, <laughs> but I'm really interested in learning more about. And if you know Ken, you know Ken knows everything. So this will be really good. Uh, he's going to talk to us about the Disney parade specials that were on television that I probably never watched. I think my parents probably just changed the channel when I was a kid. <laughs> so I'm curious to kind of learn more about this. This is exciting. So I've never been to a Disney park. Uh, I, I'm vaguely curious to go to Disneyland just because I love mid-century stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Though it sounds like not a ton of it still there, but like, uh, what is it? The Tiki Island thing or whatever. Um, the, is tiki interesting. Room. the magic tiki room. T- the tiki room yeah. yeah that's interesting to me um also side note have you guys covered pleasure island at all on the show no you mean the one in here in massachusetts but do you do you know the connection to disney though with it no yeah. i know a little bit of the history of it but i don't know its connection to disney so quickly pleasure island was uh, an amusement park in wakefield massachusetts and it was one of the biggest vacation spots in the country <laughs> and so people would come for the summer to wakefield mass there was lakes and there was this amusement park called pleasure island that was the number one rival to disney <laughs> to disneyland in california and when pleasure island went out of business i think in 72 disney bought the intellectual property rights and all the naming conventions for their entire park <laughs> mostly ah. so that no, they wouldn't reopen ever yeah <laughs> but then they opened pleasure island in disneyland i think disney world has pleasure island i forget which one well disney world for a while <laughs> had this adult area that they created and they called it pleasure island so right. it's a bunch of nightclubs had a comedy club i went there once with, with my wife at the time and now it's been remade and they call, it's called disney springs now oh ah, well, see it doesn't need to be pleasure island because the other one's not coming back <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah, and I, you know what, Ken, this is good for me to know because I, if when I would highways in ninety five, ninety three, yeah, whenever I'm driving there, I always see Pleasure Island, and I'm always like, ooh, that sounds like fun. What is that? And I always meant to, like made a mental note to Google it when I get home, and I always forget. So now I know it was an awesome amusement park that is shut down. That sounds great. It is now an industrial park. It's like the oh. most boring. It's it's like they went, how? what's the most not an amusement park thing we can put here? And it's industrial park. But the amazing thing is they used to have a, a Moby Dick ride with a big mechanical white whale that would come up, kind of like the Jaws ride at Universal. But this is in the 50s. And when the park closed, they took everything out, except they couldn't get the whale out of the lake. So until maybe 10 years ago, it was still in there. So there was like a track with this whale. And if you were in the offices, you could look down and there's just like a, like a rotting, you know, <laughs> aluminum whale. So, all right. Can I get to ask you a question now? You are pop culture genius extraordinaire. And just in your travels, you go to LA a lot. In yeah. your travels, you said like no real interest in kind of just checking out Disney, maybe not for rides or anything, but just kind of an experience to take it in. Let's talk about that for a second. So I'm very antisocial. Like I joke about it, but I really am. And I don't like crowds. Um, <clears throat> I hate waiting in line for anything. And 
that I, so generally amusement parks like are not my thing like even when i would go to canopy lake i would just go to the arcade <laughs> and sit in there <laughs> or go to like the rides that they don't use like that weird bingo hall and like just stuff that no one goes in and just like bring a book uh so it, that for that reason i haven't been that interested and also it's so expensive i'm like to drive down to long beach um or wherever it is yeah it's like near long beach anaheim um you know and then go in there for the day like i could eat like 10 meals and often do <laughs> i've almost gone a couple times like i have friends that have season passes and are like we're going you know you guys can come or like we're going during halloween and then like for whatever reason something happens and we don't go so it's happened it's come close a few times mm -hmm. uh although i was a little <clears throat> i'm kind of glad i didn't go at halloween because i was like halloween's probably great there but then i realized it's all night before christmas which is a christmas movie and not halloween and like they make the haunted mansion all nightmare before christmas during and i'm like no that like that's the opposite of what i want to see yeah you'd probably enjoy mickey's halloween party though although i haven't been to that but I okay hear that's not all night before Christmas uh, themed, but you know, Andrew and I were talking before, like you're actually our only guest, I think who's never been to Disney. <laughs> and we were thinking like, maybe we'll get like a GoFundMe to raise money to take Ken to Disney World. People want to take me, I'll go. So, all right, so tell, tell me what these things were. So I the bit, so I can, I, I know more about the televised portion of it, but I'm going to uh, guess on the Disney p park portion of it, which I'm sure either you can correct me on or like all your listeners will inundate you with how wrong I am. But uh, Walt Disney was pretty um, brilliant in having his Sunday night Disney show on move networks a few times, but it served as like 50% Disney media uh, promotion and 50% promotion for the park. <laughs> and so he basically got uh, an hour of park promotion every week in prime time on family hour network TV that they paid him to do. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's how I got hooked on the parks is from yeah. the show. Yeah. And, and the, the show, if people remember <clears throat> it, it was especially in the 50s, 60s, 70s, it would alternate between sort of pilots for movies that never happen like sort of shaggy dog type stuff and then a lot of like nature documentaries like like the lonely cougar um and which is an actual one uh and stuff like that and then they would do things that were like almost uh like behind the scenes at the park like especially if they were ever launching a new attraction or launching a new ride or and some of those you can still see on youtube i think there's one about the haunted mansion um you know and they were still doing those into the 80s and, and into the 90s really when disney channel and disney buying abc kind of put an end to needing to do that because now they have a 24-hour cycle of being able to promote this stuff all the time <clears throat> but they also and i think main street usa is that in both parks yes yeah so they had this main street usa and they're like there's no rides here how do we get people to come to this part of the park and their idea was well we'll have parades so i believe almost every week there's some kind of parade at a disney park for whatever thing down main street usa every every day every day, every day. Yeah, every day. okay <laughs> so in addition, they have these sort of special parades. So they do a Christmas parade every year, they do a Halloween parade, and they televise those because they were like, well, this isn't the parade we do every day. This is special. It's the Christmas parade. So they would usually get a two hour block for that. You know, they'd have Regis Feldman or somebody come in and, and, and host this thing. Uh, are the dogs super loud behind me, by the way? <laughs> They're not super loud, but they can hear them. You know, okay. it's okay. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, so they so they would they would televise these parades make an event of them and really make them kind of like a cornerstone of yeah just come hang out and you like parades come here and and parades were one of the earliest things that were televised uh in the history of television because they were already happening they're pretty easy you put a lockdown camera there and everything walks by you <laughs> So, you know, the Macy's parade, most local uh, cities have a parade tradition. There's just parade in Chicago. They all sort of had their own traditions with this. So it was a longstanding thing to televise. It's super cheap and easy to do. Uh, you know, you're, you're producing it anyway, essentially. So you just put a camera there. It's almost like filming a live theater show. So they started doing these every year. 
<clears throat> they do a Christmas one every year. They did a Halloween one most years. The productions got bigger and bigger and bigger as they went on especially when Disney bought ABC. So when Disney bought ABC, all of a sudden you're seeing, you know, the stars of your favorite ABC shows are hosting the parade. And they started doing whole nights of television where all the episodes took place at Disney. <laughs> and, you know, they'd have the cast of Full House goes to Disneyland or goes to Disney World and they go to the parade. So they really just expanded why they would show these things. And those I watched all of <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of, it's kind of ironic that when he first did the show with abc he did it to raise money for disneyland and the parks became so popular they made enough money to end up buying abc <laughs> yeah oh yeah it's like hey can i borrow some money thanks now i'm gonna buy you <laughs> yeah exactly so all right can, can i get asked a question so like when i watch the macy's day parade or something right They'll bring in like a marching band from, you know, St. Louis. High school, and here yeah. they are, the St. Louis marching band, Raider kids, whatever. Would Disney also bring in outside folks or would it just all be kind of Disney employees? We're going to do the Mickey float. We're going to have our own stuff. I'm just curious about that. Would, would it be kind of like a tr traditional parade or the more just Disney centric, if you know? To the best of my memory, it was all Disney centric. So it okay. was, it, you know, they'd have celebrities, you right. know, it's like here, it's the Mary Poppins float and who's on the float. It's, uh, you know, what's her name from solid gold. Um, <laughs> Dion Warwick. Or, uh, Marilyn uh, McCoo. Know, yeah. uh, it's Marilyn McCoo. You know, it would be that kind of stuff. Um, again, especially when ABC got bought, because it would be like, here's the cast of Growing Pains with Winnie the Pooh, you know, it'd be that kind of stuff, which is some really weird mixtures of people. Uh, and especially, I especially love seeing the ones from sort of the, um, the, the early 80s to the late 80s, pre Little Mermaid. Um, when Disney had pretty much given up on animation and almost closed the animation studio and, it, and was trying a bunch of weird stuff that didn't quite hit. So it'll, it'll be like, it's Robert Guillaume and the Wuzzles. <laughs> <laughs> now, what got you into, I mean, I know you watch a lot of TV in general, but do you, are you a fan of parades? Like you watch all the Macy Days parade and all, and you just, so you naturally gravitated towards the Disney parades or? I guess, I mean, Macy's parade is the one thing I've only missed two in my entire life watching. I watch them every single year. It's like my favorite thing every year. And I don't I don't really know. I just always watch them. The two I missed was because I was living in the UK and they didn't air them. But uh, they're just fun. Like it, it's also the older I get, the more of a check in with current pop culture they are, because I would say the last 20 years, no idea who anyone is. <laughs> Never heard of the Broadway shows don't know the singers but i'm like okay all right there's some checking in on the real world for a while um the disney ones were a little different i did used to watch wonderful world the disney and the various names for it every week because i love an anthology and i love failed pilots and you know i started watching that when it was like the scarecrow of romney marsh which is just an amazing thing that disney did um if, which if you haven't seen is amazing just fantastic um you know and they would sometimes do horror stuff like mr boogie or they would do stuff like uh, an adaption of sleepy hollow or that kind of stuff they would show so i would watch those um and then every halloween they would have a, a disney's haunted halloween uh one year it was hosted by jonathan winters as a talking pumpkin <laughs> um, and one year it was hosted by um, the Wicked Stepmother's Mirror. One year it was hosted by the woman in the crystal ball from the Haunted Mansion. And they would oh, just yeah. show like, you know, like the classic Donald Duck cartoon with the trick or treating, you know, the the thing from Fantasia and that on Bald Mountain, like all that kind of stuff. So I would watch them every week, kind of hoping that I would see something like that. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it was the parade and I'd just watch it too. <laughs> All right, so I gotta ask. All right, so adult Ken understands Disney, understands what he's interested and not interested in. As a kid, were you like, wow, I need to get to this place? Or was it just like, man, it's good enough just watching on TV? I, I, I never had any interest in Disney. And, really? and I, I was always kind of like a Warner Brothers guy and like Disney seemed a little bit too much like the man. Uh, <laughs> especially in the eighties. I also, and this will sound made up, but this is hundred percent true. I love Don Bluth. And even at four years old, 
I used to read this in a fantastic magazine and all these magazines. So I knew that they were like screwing over Don Bluth <laughs> and he got fired after the black cauldron. And I love the black cauldron. That's another thing they should exploit at Halloween. Like they don't do any black cauldron stuff. And that movie's amazing. Um, I love something wicked this way comes, which was their, you know, horror movie, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and then they just kind of dumped that whole wing. That's and, the, the and, live action movie. Yes, the live action movie. It's Ray Bradbury adaptation, and it's amazing. Um, and that was from Ray Bradbury's sort of dark carnival period. And it's literally about an evil carnival that comes to town and steals everybody's souls. So it's like, it's like an anti amusement park movie. Um, <laughs> but I loved those. And then when those kind of went away, I was like, Disney's sold out <laughs> at like four or five years old. And because they didn't embrace <clears throat> that aspect of it like it just wasn't interesting to me for whatever weird reason and i also we used to go to a lot of like local amusement parks like whalen park and rocky point and canopy lake and so i had this weird even though i didn't enjoy them <laughs> uh, although i did see some at the fox uh, in a roller rink at uh at uh rocky point um <laughs> I had this weird loyalty to them and I'm, I was so contrarian as a kid, like the sort of richy rich kids, like over vacation would be like, yeah, we went to Disney world. And I'd be like, Hey, I hate you. Um, <laughs> we didn't go anywhere. So I think that was part of it. And then it just, you know, next thing you know, you're 41 years old. <laughs> it's also kind of a very new England thing to be like, yeah, we have stuff in new England. We don't need to go to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Disney world. Yeah. I'll stay at Rocky point. Thank you. Disney to me, like I've also never been to Las Vegas and I kind of put them in a similar category of they're like a, they're like VR, they're like analog VR. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why we've talked about this a little bit when we talk about the rides and people who don't like Disney, the, like the thing that I like about Disney is, yeah, it's, it's creating this alternate world for you to kind of be in. Yeah. And Vegas is very, very much a different type of alternate world, but yes. Yeah. The, it's Pleasure Island as a city. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I always loved like like um, and again, this is way off your topic, but like Chuck E. Cheese, I loved, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the experimental Chuck E. Cheese location was in Danvers, Mass, what and this was the one with experimental. It, they would roll out new attractions or test market things there, so there's all kinds of bizarre Chuck E. Cheese stuff that were only at this one, and when I, and it was happened to be the one we would go to for all birthday parties, so like they'd have a new animatronic show. And then they, we'd like, they'd like interview us about it after. <laughs> and then most of those, no one else ever saw because it was <laughs> like they were testing stuff. So there was also a um, sort of a, a test market version of the cheese factory there, the Chuck E. Cheese cheese factory. And it was like a fun house, but you could not physically get inside it if you were over 10 years old. <laughs> Like it was really small. I had little doors and I still have dreams slash nightmares about being in there. <laughs> but like that, all that, like that occupied more of my amusement park brain, I guess, because those are more accessible. So, so growing up, we're talking hierarchy of amusement park. I grew up just down the street from the greatest 42nd street type amusement park imaginable. And that was the Brockton fair. <laughs> and so that's where you wanted to go if you really wanted some exciting thrills and to be a little bit dangerous. Whereas Lincoln Park to us was like, oh, this is fancy pants here because these rides don't leave after a week and a half on a truck. How many and bolts can fall out of this ride with it still <laughs> being safe? <laughs> Whereas Disney World, like that was the Taj Mahal. That's where you were going if you wanted kind of be classy amusement park experience. So when you're watching these parades, like you've watched them for a number of years. So other than like the change of celebrities, the types of celebrities they had in the parades, like did you notice any other things changing? Like did the technology change? Did they get, you said they got like a little better and better as they kind of went along. Anything stands out from some of these parades that were memorable to you? Like in, when they had different kind of. I do recall sort of a shift to them realizing they were broadcasting these on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so when they first started, it was literally like, you know, it'd be a car, you know, a float driving down the street with loudspeakers on it playing, you know, Mickey singing something or music with a Mickey voice and the, you know, costume character miming it. And then it would go away to, you know, the, the thing would stop. They would do a whole production number to the camera. 
you know, it wouldn't be coming out of a little speaker. Like it clearly would be a pre-tape, you know, with involving the television production. Like they definitely geared them more towards that as they went on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I enjoyed seeing different characters come in because I loved like Darkwing Duck <laughs> or like, you know, the the Tailspin crew. Like as that stuff sort of started becoming a little bit more popular, um, it has been really weird. I haven't seen one in a number of years, but as Disney's bought up more and more and more properties, it was very strange to see like the Muppets partake all of a sudden or like the, the Star Wars gang, you know, or the Pixar people. Um, that was always weird. Cause it was like, you can't do this, <laughs> especially Muppets. Cause like Disney having anything to do with the Muppets is so crazy to me so even to this day when i see the muppets involved with any of the parks at all like i'm just like i this how is this a thing (laughs) it doesn't it doesn't compute with me and so seeing the disney character i mean the muppets sort of get involved with the disney characters is Mm. still bizarre yeah so that's interesting because i know like andrew you said you've never seen a parade at the parks or well no i mean i've seen them like Pass like if we're, we don't seek them out, but if like we're there and the parade goes by, we'll like stop and watch it. And it's okay. fun. So, yeah. so like what Ken was describing to me is, is strictly a TV thing, Ken, because if, if you're in the park, like they're very good about maintaining the consistency of the park. So, if you're in Magic Kingdom, which has a lot of parades, uh, I think like a couple times a day, you will only see characters right. that you would associate with the park. So, you won't see Muppets in Magic Kingdom because the only Muppets are in uh, Hollywood Studios. Okay. So it will only be the characters from, from those places. But they have they an do, apartheid system. Yeah, but they do. I mean, it is a lot like you were describing in the sense that, you know, it is a moving parade, but they will stop at certain sections and they will do bigger numbers occasionally. Like right. people on the float will get out, they'll dance and they'll get back on and they move a little further down the line. But uh, yeah, they have that opportunity on TV to kind of mix everything together where they don't do that well, in the parks. Like it, I mean, I've seen it at Hollywood Studios. They'll do like a um, Star Wars type parade where like the stormtroopers will come out and march and Darth Vader, and then there might be a fight or they'll bring a little Which kid. Which is up. super fascist, by the way. Well, yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll bring a kid, a, a small child up or something. So the, I think the, they kind of try to sync the in park parades to whatever is, whatever makes sense. Like you wouldn't see Darth Vader and Little Mermaid walking around together. Although that could be fun too. But see, to me, that would be the appeal of actually going to the park. Mm. Like if, if you were selling it to me, like, look, this is the only place that you're going to see Kermit swimming with the little mermaid <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, Darth Vader fighting, um, what the villain from the little mermaid, whatever that lady's name is, uh, uh the one that looks like Ursula. Ursula. Yeah. Ursula. Um, you know, I'm like, Oh, that could be interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you might have been like in Disneyland. Because in okay. Disneyland, they have, well, they have Magic Kingdom and they have California Adventureland. But in Magic Kingdom, they have the Star Wars land is there. So you could have Star Wars characters and the other Disney, classic Disney characters interacting. I mean, they generally don't let them outside of their land, but they yeah. could potentially be in a parade together. I think that'd be wild if they did that. And that's kind of a fun idea, Ken, to have you know, them all hanging out. Yeah, and I wish they would. Um, they have so many properties that I like. <clears throat> that they own that they don't exploit in the parks like gargoyles or you know like 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 the wuzzles which i actually really enjoyed uh or the dark you know uh the, the black cauldron or you know there, there's all kinds of interesting stuff in their back catalog and in the vaults that i would find more interesting but i recognize that i am not the mainstream <laughs> are the gargoyles a spinoff of like hunchback in notre dame or no, Gargoyles was a uh, uh, original Disney animation uh, show for television. It was three seasons. It was very much like Batman the Animated Series. It's really great. It's the Gargoyles are the heroes. Um, the voice work was amazing. The the just the character designs like very Art Deco and moody. Um, and it's it's the one thing where I'm like, why isn't this the Halloween aesthetic they embrace every year? <laughs> Like they already own this property. It's perfect for that. Um, you know, and I would love to see like live action versions of the Gargoyles characters or, uh, you know, again, it's like, it's there. <laughs> Just give it to me. It wouldn't, 
that wouldn't be too scary though because i remember you you're also like you gotta keep it friendly for the uh, preschool set but i feel like the preschool set is afraid of everything That's like they're scared <laughs> of eeyore <laughs> but for good reason probably too. yeah yeah <laughs> um press donkey i mean did you ever see the weird live action christian uh winnie the pooh show that used to be on the disney channel no (laughs) oh wow live Uh, action so like a person in costumes and all oh oh, yes uh (laughs) if you have a few minutes and you don't want to sleep for a couple weeks uh look that one up on youtube uh that is some interesting stuff (laughs) yeah i'm surprised that there aren't more scary things too because like disney like animation it was always he felt it was always okay to, to scare children a little bit as long as there was like a happy ending. <clears throat> kind of yeah. ratcheted up the tension and it provided a bigger payoff in the movies. But it's interesting, Ken, uh, early on, I don't know if it's going to make the edit for the, the show, but we were talking about this behind the scenes show they have on Disney Plus and uh, on the Haunted Mansion, they actually had two like separate teams developing it. And there's this t- back and forth between like one group really wanted to be scary and the other wanted to be funny. You know, it ended up being a, a merger of the two. So there's always a, kind of that balance. And so that, that is the, kind of the feeling like Andrew's saying for the park, there's always that feeling in the park that nothing's really too scary. It's always kind of fun and funny as opposed to, to being scary. But like I, two things that reminds me of is one uh, in Italy, which was fascist country for many years, uh, horror movies were banned. And the only thing resembling a horror movie that people saw was Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. And so in the 50s, when fascism fell and the the restrictions were dropped, the first few horror movies you got in Italy were influenced by Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. And it's really interesting because that sort of uh, color scheme, that sort of really, you know, reds and blues and is very influenced in those early movies, which is really strange. but the other thing is, which I don't remember what I was going to say now, something about the parks, Haunted Mansion. Scary stuff. Oh, no, yeah. It's unrelated to scary stuff is the other stuff that I find interesting um, with the parks I don't think is even there anymore, like Tomorrowland. Oh, no, and, it's there. still there. Okay. Because, right. like, at one point that was futuristic, but now it's kind of retro and interesting like you know retro futurism that stuff i love um or like epcot and that kind of thing um which it seems like they got rid of some of that stuff no they they keep redoing it so epcot is still largely the same there are they were doing a a do-over i was getting really excited for it because i thought so initially i think you probably know this but the original idea for walt was this experimental prototype city of tomorrow so it's supposed to be like a real city that you could walk around in and see how you might be living in the future. And then that got changed and ended up being this, uh, a couple of different pavilions, right? Where you have kind of the latest technology in one, how they do agriculture. And then you had the- Like a World's Fair kind of thing. Yeah, you had the, uh, why am I blanking on the name? Andrew, what do they call the the part with all the countries? Oh, uh, oh God. World Showcase, World yeah. Showcase. Yeah, so that hasn't changed that much. Ken, since it opened in, in the 80s or whatever, they were supposed to do a re- makeover. And I thought they were going to make it more like Experimental City, but all they did was like they changed the flower and the schemes and stuff. Um, where was I going with this? We were talking about, oh, you talked about Tomorrowland. So interestingly, I read this recently where there had been a lot of back and forth about that, whether they should keep updating Tomorrowland to be more futuristic. But even in the initial version, it was kind of a throwback in some senses as to what we thought like a rocket ride would be or whatever. So they're, they're, they're kind of trying to do both with that. They're trying to keep some of the old feel. Like if you go there now, there's still the Astro Orbiter, which is a really kind of old fashioned ride where you're just kind of looping around a pole, right? And in, in these ships, uh, they have them at every thing. Like Canopy Lake had the, I think they have the sail things. And oh yeah, yeah. Every park has something like that. So you still have these old fashioned rides there in Tomorrowland, but they try to update some of the other rides with, uh, you know, current technology. Right. Do they have a I mean, t- it, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I think they always have to keep the kind of the old school aesthetic of it because that's Tomorrowland. And, you know, they can get weirder, I think, in other areas of the park, but I think they have to keep that kind of, you know, 60s modern type feel there. So that's where they have the Star Wars part. <laughs> no, no, that's interesting. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in, in uh, Disney World, the Star Wars part is in a different park. That's in Hollywood Studios. 
in Anaheim, it is part of Magic Kingdom. It's a, but it's a separate land. Oh, altogether. so they're truly separate parks. Like you have to leave yes. and go and in, buy in Disney World. Ticket. They're physical parks. There's four physical parks that you have to <clears throat> go into. Oh wow, I didn't even yeah. know that. And you okay. can get separate tickets for them, or you can get one park hopper pass, which is you know a better deal if you're going to do multiple parks in a day. But but they're like geographically far apart from each other. Like yeah. you can't. Oh just, wow. You know, walk across the street. I remember kids would always talk about staying at the what's the tiki hotel? Oh, oh Polynesian. Polynesian, which I think have they redone that and it's not as tiki anymore or something? No, no, it's still very okay. Polynesian. Yeah. Um, and kids are about that, and whenever I've looked it up, I'm like, well, I would just go and not leave the hotel. It's really yeah. nice. It is. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, and for the price, you might as well just stay there. Well stay. The hotel. Yeah, Do they have a Toontown? they did and they got rid of that yeah okay see that would be interesting to me like that would feel very weirdly submersive yeah they they did it it was kind of an experimental thing and unfortunately what they replaced it with ken which you won't appreciate too much is the character signings basically getting signatures from characters became really popular and so people now it's all like lining up in long lines to get a, a signature from whatever princess is your favorite princess really? yeah. yeah yeah and it's it's really my daughter was into it um you know probably from ages like six to ten and it was really kind of a nightmare because you would stand in a line for 45 minutes to get like the kid from up's signature and the kid from up is essentially just you know somebody in a costume it's a forgery yeah and, yeah, exactly. yeah and then the other thing that they do is they will switch them out so like to keep the line moving you know i guess you can only sign autographs for 45 minutes or whatever so they will just like switch it out for somebody else and i you know and i wanted to be a good mom and play along with it but i'm like we're, we're getting signa- this, this you know not that autographs are a big deal for me at all but i was like these aren't even autographs these are things and but she loved it she got to meet them so we, we played a line with it but did you yeah, get a picture um, too or did you get a picture oh, taken yeah, yeah. As well? you get your picture taken you can take your own picture they'll use your camera to take a picture and it, it's a really in my opinion kind of a weird thing to do but kids seem to like it so. that's very strange i i've um i've interviewed a few different women who did disney voices so like jody benson there was the little mermaid um I feel bad I'm blanking on her name because I've interviewed her twice, but she was uh, Jasmine and uh, Aladdin. And they've told me interesting things about Disney because they essentially put them under retainer for life um, and pay them like a salary every year to do events at the parks. (laughs) So, and it also keeps them from doing other voices. (laughs) So you will see before they really started doing stunt casting where they're casting like someone who's already famous, you know, as the princess or whatever. Um, And when Disney just came, came back, you know, the beauty and the beast, Aladdin, little mermaid kind of era, um, they would uh, basically, yeah, like contract these people to be like, okay, every year you'll come and you'll do an event here. You know, it's the voice of whatever. And you have lifetime passes whenever you want to come into your VIP, anyone you want to bring and all that stuff. Um, but as a, you also can't do other cartoon voices. <laughs> yeah. So they're like Ursula. They took their voice, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, they still do events, you know, at the, at the parks. And mm-hmm. um, it's funny because the reason I bring that up is I bet kids are not nearly as excited to meet the actual people than a some college intern wearing a costume of the person. I mean, I will will say like the people that are, you know, the princesses that are signing the art, they're great. Like they really get into the character. They will interact as the character. It's pretty wild. Like I'm pretty impressed at how they maintain that. Um, Is it like old Sturbridge village where they pretend they don't understand anything that's not from the world they came from? Like you hand them your camera to take a picture and they're like, what is this magical device? (laughs) No, they're not quite that bad, but you know, like Tinkerbell will be Tinkerbell. And she would say kind of what you would expect Tinkerbell to say. So I mean, and their kids like, why are you huge? Oh, they get a they get a small person to play Tinkerbell, but they're yeah, still not as small tall. as actually Tinkerbell. <laughs> yeah, 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 she's six inches tall. No, but and you know, I didn't want to kind of ruin the fantasy for my daughter at such a young age. But when she got older, I was like, "Did you understand like that that wasn't actually Pocahontas?" 
And I think as she got older, she totally got it. But I think as like a younger kid, she thought like, all right, I'm legit meeting Pocahontas right now. You know, this is, five years this is old. Really, Jessica Rabbit. Pocahontas. Yeah. It's uh, Pocahontas. Well, my yeah. niece is in her, in her 30s now. She does not care. She wants to see Eeyore. She doesn't care that it's a guy in an Eeyore suit. She yeah. wants to. Well, you know, you, you lean into the fantasy, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Have you guys covered the Disney gangs yet? No. <laughs> what gangs are these? Oh, there's 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 dudes who have like full on Disney biker gangs. Biker gang, really? And like, oh yeah, yeah. look this up. This will okay. be good for a future episode. For yeah. You. All right, we'll check that one out. <laughs> um, but I take it they're a peaceful biker gang. They're not like they have some turf wars. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is, yeah, that'll I be very interesting. To make us Google ridiculous things. I think no, I that is a real <laughs> thing. I swear to you, you All will. Right. Disney like put it biker gang. yeah put aside like a whole evening because you're gonna go down uh, a web rabbit hole of reading articles about these things <laughs> that you uh you just should prep for so yeah you were mentioning you know the the people that did the voices so like my niece when she was born uh, when she was young she loved beauty and the beast and i had to watch it like over and over again anytime you babysat you watch beauty and the beast 100 times or um What's it, Little, Little Mermaid? Little Mermaid. So, yeah. but but she and my niece in law, like they they are big fans of the the people who did the singing. Like they yeah. will go see those people in concert or something. They will go, like so. That's maybe who those people are for when they do those appearances. It's kind of the yeah. I mean, I think Jody Benson's the only one who did the singing and the voice. And the voice. Yeah. Um, everyone else, they had someone they matched and they matched pretty closely. Um, but yeah, a lot a lot of New York actors they would they would cast a lot of like Broadway people. Mm -hmm. um, for those things. Um, yeah, it's it, just the stories they told me were fascinating because it, and again, this is slightly off topic, so I apologize, but like they were basically making Aladdin and um, Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid kind of all at the same time because they, you know, it takes five years or whatever to make a movie, animated movie. And this was like, hey, if this doesn't work, we're just closing the animation studio. <laughs> Which they had almost done a few times. And uh, uh, Little Mermaid ended up being the first one that came out and was a huge hit and they were surprised <laughs> and it's interesting hearing from them from that side of it uh, you know seeing this sort of come back to life when you know I think people take for granted now <laughs> it's Disney everyone but in 1988 1989 that wasn't that wasn't a for sure you know <laughs> Yeah, no, they'd had a they had a, a little dry spell there, and they had a kind of a rough patch, even financially for them at least. But uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Great Mouse Detective did not do well, um, and I think I think Great Mouse Detective was the last Disney movie before The Little Mermaid. Might be wrong. Mm. So uh, before we finish, what do you have? You you watch a ton of TV, and you know a lot about particularly that era of like the '80s. And so. Uh, any other like favorite Disney things that you would watch or, um, a hundred percent, uh, the scarecrow of Romney Marsh. Mm -hmm. Everyone should watch that. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but it's, um, it's sort of like Zorro. Um, it stars Patrick McGowan, who was secret agent man in the prisoner. And he basically plays this, this, um, vigilante who dresses like a scarecrow and it's sort of Robin Hoodie, but the Scarecrow costumes are just terrifying and amazing. And that was a Disney production, 71 or 72, I think. Um, Gargoyles, if you've not seen Gargoyles, it is incredible. Um, everyone should watch Gargoyles. I, I still don't understand why that's not like the biggest Disney property, uh, especially now with all the supernatural stuff and kids loving, you know, monsters. And it's just awesome. Uh -huh. um, those are the two big ones i think that are sort of underrated that i do revisit all right well maybe they'll pop up on disney plus or something Did, was the scarecrow part of like wonderful world of disney or was it its own show or it was wonderful world disney they did three installments i think of it mm. yeah it's called the, the scarecrow of romney marsh aka dr sin s-y-n another thing to google you have to take a deep dive into the disney plus thing yeah there's I, gargoyles this is, is all on there kind of new to me yeah gargoyles is on there um, and it's just, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> this may or may not be of interest, but so a friend of mine, the actress, Molly Hagen, who has been in a ton of stuff, she was in Herman's head. Um, people probably best know her from, she was, um, on I zombie, she's an election. She's in all this other stuff. She emailed me this a few years ago and was like, Hey, I have a weird question for you. 
I was in a, a a Wonderful World of Disney. It was it was a failed pilot, but it was it aired Wonderful World of Disney, and it was a pilot for a, a detective show with me and George Carlin, and it was called Just in Case, and George Carlin played a detective who was killed and came back as a ghost, and her as she was probably twenty at the time, her and this ghost detective George Carlin solved mysteries was the show. And it only aired one episode. And she goes, Disney called her and asked her if they had, if she had a copy of it. <laughs> Cause they didn't have <laughs> one. Right. So she's like, oh, I don't, I bet Ken Reed does. And I did. <laughs> so I dubbed it off and that's the official <laughs> copy that Disney now has. <laughs> wow. That's great. So it's probably in the Disney archives now. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah how did you get that copy? I just had a bunch like, of wonderful world Disney episodes. Again? People had taped off TV that I had gotten through tape trading. So I just had it. Right. Right. <laughs> it's funny that she's like, I bet he has that. And I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, anything else you can think of Andrea before we even wrap up? I, I think, no, I think we're good. I think I've got a list of things and I'm going to Google these parades cause I want to check them out. And I'm particularly interested in 80s Disney parades because that sounds completely weird and uncomfortable. They're very so I weird. I want to see that. And if you can't find them, I have some. Any... Okay. Right. I like it. Yeah, you All think right. they're on YouTube? We could probably look them up. Some kind of... of them are, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, that, that'd no, be no, fun no. to do. The, uh, on the Disney Plus, they have <laughs> some old some old stuff from the original days of Disneyland. And they had like one of the parades as part of this show or whatever. And it's just really interesting because it was it, costume wise are pretty primitive compared to what you're used to in the parks. Like only the three little pigs kind of looked like three little pigs. Everybody else kind of was like, is that supposed to be Mickey a little Mouse? off brand? <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little off model. Yeah. So, yeah. It'd be cool to see how they kind of evolved and changed. Yeah. I know a few were up there at least uh, recently. So they're worth checking out. All right. And we'll look for those on YouTube. All right. And, uh, and again, to our audience, you heard a lot of fun facts from Ken. Uh, check out the TV Guidance Counselor podcast. Hopefully I didn't go too far off topic. Oh, it's fun. I mean, you can only talk so long about no, parades anyways. Yeah, yeah. No, this was great. Thank you so much, Ken. And Ken, um, we, we like to close out in a certain way. So I'm going to put something in the chat. Oh, let me okay. open the chat. Hold on. So... Okay. There you go. No, we're all going to say it together. All right, ready? Okay. Yep. See, See you real soon. soon.